All right, so I'm going to talk about uh, uh, real-time mobile applications in, uh, inter in, uh, in intermittently connected networks. And so basically the idea is that, you know, we, out at the edge we have all these sort of real-time applications that need to communicate with each other uh, reliably. So imagine we have a, a, a group of soldiers, they're out in the field, they're, they're doing some search task, they're going into buildings, but, and they have these mobile devices, such as a, you know, a, a, a pad or a, a, some other mobile device, but when they go into buildings, often, uh, you know, we're out in, 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 the, in the real world, uh, out, out in, a, in a remote area where, where we don't have network infrastructure, and so uh, it's often we're going to lose connectivity and when they go in the building and they're not going to be able to talk to each other. So that's sort of the reality of, of, of life at the edge. And so we're looking at, at building some technologies to, to make applications work better in, in these, these sorts of environments. Uh, a lot of times application developers assume the network uh, is always there, and so we're looking to sort of move beyond that sort of a situation. So, so developing applications that expect the, the network to, to not be available all the time. And so we focus on sort of three uh, phases of communication. So there's sort of the connected state, when we, you know, what are we gonna do when, when we have our network connection? What are we gonna do when we have a disconnection? And, and what are we gonna do to get reconnected? And so we have different uh, parts of the, of, of the work focus on, on these, these three phases. So when we're connected, you know, uh, the, the goal is we want to make, maintain group contacts. We want to have all our soldiers be able to share uh, information on their devices efficiently. And some of the things we might want to do is we might want to pre-cache data that, that we might need in the future. Uh, you know, that's akin to, you know, preloading map tiles as I'm driving down the road. I'll preload map tiles in, in, in front of me. Um, I also want to sort of possibly delay communication of, of uh, non-critical data. So if I'm uh, conducting a search task, uh, and I find a weapons cache. Well, the weapons cache is interesting, but it's not directly related to what I'm doing. So I can just store that information locally and not waste uh, network resources as trans transmitting that, that information immediately. Uh, when we're disconnected, when we've, we've lost communications, uh, we want to continue to do our job to the, to the best extent possible. And so some of the things we might want to do there is, you know, where are my buddies? You know, I'm, I'm working with uh, other people, uh, can I predict from, say, the mission plan where my, where my buddies might be ov over time? And also, I'm interested in, you know, if I have interesting information I want to share, how, do, how can I get reconnected quickly? So those are sort of the focus uh, in that stage. And then once we're reconnected, when, once we get connectivity again, maybe it's, you know, very brief periods of connectivity or, or, or very low bandwidth, um, how do we make the, the, the how do we get synchronized as quickly as possible. Uh, during the disconnection, there might be a, a large backlog uh, of information, and so how do we work through that backlog quickly? So we've implemented this in a system called ICE, Informa Information Superior to the Edge. If you have went to the poster session yesterday, you might have heard about this. Also, Grace uh, will be talking about this in more detail in, in her talk uh, uh, later. So basically, you can imagine um, a, a uh, Google Maps type interface where you can mark events and uh, information that, that, that soldiers can, can share with each other. And so we've created a, an enhanced version of this, which we call ICE Plus, and we've put sort of five main enhancements on there. One is we took uh, a protocol called DTN, or Delay Talent Networking, which uh, is for communicating in sort of these disrupted, disrupted environments. And so we found uh, uh, an implementation of this, uh, a Java implementation of this that we, we've uh, adapted and modified uh, to work with our, our ICE application. We also uh, made use of a feature called uh, metadata extension blocks in DTN and added uh, functionality to filter uh, irrelevant data and prioritize messages. And that helps us to resynchronize more quickly. Uh, there's also uh, features for SA, situation awareness uh, prediction. That's basically the where my buddies um, uh, 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 feature. And uh, also looking at dynamic connectivity map construction and, and the connectivity map, though this is a technology that allows us to sort of tells me where do I go if I'm disconnected and I want to get a connection again, where should I go? So it's kind of like kind of like a heat map of, of where to go to to get reconnected, and finally, pre-crashing of, of uh, uh, mission data. 
Now I'm going to focus on the metadata parts and show some experimental results uh, on that for the rest of the, my talk. So basically, the, the meta DTN metadata allow you to attach metadata to your messages, which in the DTN world are called bundles. Um, and basically, um, we attach a set of key, key value pairs. Um, so things like the creation time, the priority of the message, um, identifier for, for what, what data stream uh, the message is related to. Um, we haven't implemented yet, but potentially we could, could put things like location, um, you know, semantic information about messages like here's a, here's a picture of a fire or here's a, here's a picture of a riot or something like that. And uh, on, the, on the DTN nodes, uh, they're able to, to, to process this metadata and make certain decisions on scheduling and uh, on discarding. So uh, if, if, I, if I have a disconnection, my queue's building up, I can decide uh, which messages are most important to go first or uh, which ones should be, should, should be dropped as a result. Okay, so I'm going to sort of present the results from, from one of the experiments using the, uh, the metadata uh, extension blocks, and so the goal of this is to sort of show uh, reduction in the transmission of, of redundant messages, which will uh, decrease the time that takes to get resynchronized after uh, we regain connectivity again. And so um, we have a couple of ice nodes. One is generating messages of, of four different types. Uh, there are location update messages, which have uh, an expiration time. So if uh, a met the expiration time is expired, we'll drop the message. There are comments added to events, where events are things like um, there's a fire, or there's a riot, or there's a problem at a checkpoint. And so in the ICE system, uh, uh, treats these things as events, and you can add comments to the events. And so if I add a comment to an event, older messages about that event are now irrelevant, and so I want to replace that message with the, with the newer event. Um, also, if I have, you know, perhaps I have multiple photographs, you know, lots of soldiers are taking photographs of this riot. I don't need to share all of them. Uh, I can only share a sub, might only want to share a subset of that one. So that's a sort of redundancy elimination. And then finally, there's the, the important but not mission critical types of events, which we call conditional delivery. And so these are uh, events like what I mentioned earlier. You, we find the weapons cache, um, and I, I want to keep that information offline and only share it sort of at, at, at the end of the message. So uh, the experiment, in the experiments, we, we have a, sort of a 15-second warm-up period. We have a disconnection period. We have a 30-second period to resynchronize. And finally, a 15-second uh, period for the conditional delivery. And it, doing this, we, verif we, we, ver we uh, vary whether we have the metadata extensions enabled or disabled. We vary the disconnect time, and we vary sort of the, the, the message rates, the number of messages per second. So here's uh, sort of the, the results from this experiment. So you can see that there are a bunch of five clusters of, uh, of bars here. Each cluster is for a different disconnect period. So there's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 second disconnect periods. And within each cluster uh, is a, a bar for low, medium, and high message rate. So the total height of the bar is the number of messages that were <coughs> that were received when we have the, the metadata extension blocks turned off. And sort of the lower part of the bar is when we enable the, the metadata extension blocks. And so, and so uh, we were getting approximately a 20% reduction in uh, total messages sent in the experiment uh, using the redundancy elimination techniques. But it's also interesting to look at the, the reconnect time uh, using the, the, the metadata extension block. So here's uh, sort of the same experiments, looking at the different uh, disconnect times and the, the time to resynchronize in seconds after we get the connection back. So if you look at the red bar, for example, that's at the highest data rate. Um, you can see that the, the, the reconnection time grows rapidly when, uh, uh, with the red, red dotted line when, when I uh, don't have the metadata and we get about a 70% reduction uh, once we once we use the, the the metadata, all right. So in summary, so we've uh, improved the operational capabilities for soldiers or possibly first responders in dual environments. Um, 
giving them the ability to operate without a, a, a fully connected network, you know, providing faster, lower, lower energy synchronization. Um, we've demonstrated this in experiments showing sort of a 20% reduction in messages, a 70% reduction in reconnection time. And these capabilities have been incorporated into the ICE system, which is uh, uh, going to be continuing as part of the East project that, that, that Grace is going to be talking about. So there we go. And I guess I just click, go on to the <laughs>